I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Here we've got our first uh, session in the afternoon on the role of the individual. My name is Tilman My name is Tilman Santarius. I work for the Heinrich Böll Foundation and also for the German Watch on a voluntary basis. I'm, I'm particularly pleased to be the facilitator today in the afternoon on the role of the individual. I've become aware of the fact. Uh, and this is something you might have seen in the House of World Cultures when walking around. I suppose that you had a look at all the various uh, projects that are on exhibit. You can see, for example, the project Überlebenskunst, the Art of Survival School. What happens in uh, schools in various districts in Berlin, in Pankow, in Kreuzberg? Uh, what do they do together with pupils to find solutions for more sustainability? How can they implement this in everyday school life? Or the fantastic uh, project called Vorrats where I think uh, three or four people prepared this for six months or so, and uh, they are catering uh, to the people here uh, with their pantry. Uh, they've got regional um, organic products. Or you can see uh, several things of the Heinrich Böll Foundation, things from southern countries, from Ethiopia, for example. They are artists in a very poor village. They use natural material and work together with the communities on site and thus um, are sustainable and discuss uh, sustainability. All these are examples uh, from the grassroots, so that is a bottom-up approach, where individual people play an important role, um, where small groups form networks, um, so a bottom-up uh, approach uh, in an attempt to change society. If you go around the House of World Colleges and take a look at the individual projects, you see various things, but you don't find terms such as Kyoto Protocol or you don't read about uh, the new German transport legislation or um, uh, WTO and even uh, phasing out the nuclear power schemes is no topic here, although this was very topical here in Germany a few months ago, or just think about the climate conference in Copenhagen one and a half years ago, where uh, thousands of people went to Copenhagen so as to save the climate, or think about the WTO conferences. I took part in uh, such a conference in Cancun in 2002 where a farmer uh, was uh, in front of the WTO um, building and stabbed himself so as to make a statement and say these are unfair, non-sustainable conditions uh, that need to be changed by the WTO. So I'm showing you the links between the bottom-up projects and the changes of global and national political conditions. What can individual people do? What can be uh, kick-started uh, thanks to small projects? Where are the limits to be found? And what about the political uh, conditions? What should uh, politicians do? Uh, and what can people sometimes do against the general conditions or uh, against politicians in case of um, in Stuttgart, uh, for example, the railway station to be built in the city of Stuttgart in Germany? I'm particularly pleased to have uh, two panelists here on stage. I would like to briefly introduce them to you. Uh, to my right, Mr. Wilhelm Schmidt. He uh, is a professor at the University of Erfurt, but he is also a free philosopher, as he says, and he's an author. He uh, wrote numerous books on love, on happiness, and on ecological, the ecological art of living, which might combine all these things. And we will uh, start with um, an input by Mr. Schmidt. But first of all, a uh, very warm welcome to you, Mr. Schmidt. It is nice uh, having you here today. And then sitting to my left, Martin Unfried. Um, I already mentioned books on love, sustainability, and happiness. You've got a different label for this, uh, Ökosex. Uh, this is uh, organic sex. Many know your articles in the Tots Daily. 
You are also a songwriter and a comedian. You um, have a good sense of humor when uh, doing these uh, things. You're also a researcher in a think tank on public administration in Belgium. Um, uh, sorry, in the Netherlands, in Maastricht. Um, a nice uh, having you here, Martin Unfried, and a very warm welcome to you as well. Today in the afternoon until 4.30 we'll have two sessions and the first session, which will last until uh, a quarter past three, we will have a debate, three of us here on stage, but there are two empty chairs as you might have seen already. And after our debate uh, on stage, I would like to open the floor to you, the audience. If you want to take part in the discussion, you come and come on stage, sit down and take the floor. I already wanted to mention that there will be the possibility to make remarks or raise questions. You don't need to um, ask your question from the very last row here by a microphone. You can simply come on stage. Um, it's called a fishbowl discussion and we'll try if this will work and I will invite you uh, later on once again. This is the first session until a quarter past three where uh, we will have a discussion, first the three of us and then together with you, the audience. Then we'll have a very short break so as to prepare ourselves for the global room and then from uh, uh, later on until a quarter past five, uh, we will, uh, sorry, until half past four, we'll present uh, several bottom-up approaches. We will go to Zara Paulo in Brazil, then we will um, go to St. Petersburg in Russia, and uh, Sebastian Sladek is here with us in Germany, he will be on stage here in Berlin. I think Zara Paulo and uh, St. Petersburg are already listening to us, so a very warm welcome to you as well. But in any case, uh, we will um, have the live streaming in the second session, and they will present their individual projects. I think that has been enough. Uh, by way of an introduction, and I'm particularly looking forward to your input, Mr. Schmidt. You've got the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm particularly pleased to take part in this festival, Über Lebenskunst, because it was exactly 20 years ago that I had my first problem, as a matter of fact. Uh, no, it was a book. Uh, when I published, I published my first book, Über Lebenskunst, it was a problem as well, because the academic philosophy and philosophers were not uh, very enthusiastic about uh, the term Über Lebenskunst, the art of survival or the art of living, although there is a long philosophical background to this term, which has been forgotten in the modern era. Uh, in modern times, people speak about Überlebenskunst as well, but in pejorative terms, they say people don't think about anything, they don't ponder things, they don't assume responsibility. Philosophical uh, art of uh, survival uh, is a, a different one, and I'm particularly pleased um, to uh, be present at this festival here because I've managed during the past 20 years, or we have managed, to um, make this term Überlebenskunst become an important one again. Nobody uh, thinks that this is a carefree life, but everybody knows that we should be concerned about our lives and about the context we live in. Überlebenskunst, the art of survival or the art of living, is not easy. Uh, usually you think, well, it's easy, art is always something very simple and easy, but uh, this uh, only as long uh, as you don't have to draw, make a drawing yourself. If you have to take a pen and make a drawing, you realize uh, that it is difficult. And this is what Karl Valentin said. Art is beautiful, but it um, creates a lot of, uh, uh, well, it's difficult. That's what he said. Uh, and um, this uh, holds true for Überlebenskunst as well. I um, published a book three years ago with the title Ecological uh, Überlebenskunst, the Ecological Art of Survival. and um, in terms of Überlebenskunst, you need to think about what are the difficulties, what are the problems in the life I live. And if we refer this to ecolo ecology, uh, the vital problem is that we have to deal with technology. The ecological problems uh, only emerged because people use um, 
sophisticated technologies, not only a bicycle, for example, which can be built or made of wood and other things, but sophisticated technologies. Uh, and so as to um, implement the technical things, we need energy, and we need uh, energy to operate uh, this technology. And this will also be true in the future. We will uh, need uh, energy for the technologies, but the question is, where do we get the energy from? And then the in-depth question, why do we need these uh, sophisticated technologies at all? Everybody can find his or her own uh, answer. Do I need a car? I personally, for example, I don't need a car. Do I need, well, if I don't need a car, uh, I might need a bus or a train from time to time. I might need uh, a flight from time to time. Do I need a fridge in my home? All these are technologies that are uh, produced uh, with uh, energy, sometimes a lot of energy, and they, that need to be operated using energy. There is no way out of it. We simply need this energy. So if we don't get away from uh, the utilization of technology, and we might even have to use technology, the vital question to be asked is where do we get the uh, energy from which we need to operate the technology? And the last time people pondered this was approximately 120 years ago. Uh, the um, major issue was uh, um, car uh, automotive technology. Should uh, the driving force be oil or solar energy? There was a debate about it back then, and um, physicists were involved in this debate, but there was no uh, referendum to find the decision. Companies uh, took their decision, I suppose, due to the fact that um, crude oil was easier. But 120 years uh, later, we um, have to face the same question. We have to uh, realize that crude oil is a fossil um, energy, such as uh, carbon as well, which uh, leaves uh, traces which has an impact on our climate, climate and adversely affects ourselves. Why do I think about these things? Why do you ponder these things? Because uh, finally, it is about our own lives, possibly also about uh, life of mankind, but this is not really of our concern, of the concern of the indi individuals. First of all, we think about our own lives. We can simply live our lives, of course. This is not the art of living, of course. Uh, uh, this is a bit more sophisticated, and this is due to the fact that we think about certain things. Uh, and it is not always easy to mule things over. Um, so if we don't only live like this without thinking about things, we uh, need to ponder the environment we live in. What is my contribution, possible contribution, that technologies are needed. Technologies which are not really very uh, positive, very good for us. We will need different technologies and different types of energy, and we are right in the middle of this process. We here in Germany are much more involved in the pro process than elsewhere. Other technologies and energies are uh, indispensable, but I would like um, us to have a more in-depth approach. Philosophers always want to have a very detailed approach. This is different compared with other uh, disciplines. We always want to find the reasons, the roots, the foundations of everything. Why uh, do we uh, use resources uh, the way we use them in this carefree manner? This might be because we don't have a relationship with nature any longer. And I know um, how um, this uh, was caused. Philosophers were involved. They are involved in a lot of things, but most of the time people don't know uh, this. Uh, this is because philosophers um, think about things. In the 17th century, it was René Descartes who was convinced that, uh, that, that this is me, the subject, and this is the world ahead of me. They can't think, and they are thus uh, below me, res cogitans and res extensa are the two uh, Latin terms for this. And this expanded world, the nature, including their forests, oceans, and resources, this is something which um, uh, people can exploit thanks to their thinking. And they can exploit this arbitrarily. And this is the attitude we grew up in. Nobody um, thought about these things. This was just the way it was. And no modern thinker questioned this. And even 
Even Marx, Karl Marx, uh, did not uh, criticize this problem. He was not aware of the fact that this might be a problem for us in the future. I believe that the origin of the problem, that is the non relationship of nature. Uh, since I believe this, I would like to launch an appeal that everybody should rethink this for him or herself once again. Uh, maybe we should uh, re-enter into a relationship with nature. Some have such a relationship with nature um, since birth. I grew up on a farm, uh, so um, it was easy for me to have a very close relationship with nature, but people who live in bigger cities, and most of the people live in bigger cities nowadays, it is it is uh, difficult to have a relationship with nature. It is not a matter of fact. If we are willing to have a close relationship and maybe even a love relationship with nature, we will see that a lot of things uh, will come into being automatically because like this, people will think more about certain things. Um, I will think about uh, what attitude I should have, what my behavior should be in everyday life. So as to respect natural uh, connections or not. And in an aside, uh, we will uh, have to say that the stronger uh, the relationship with our nature is, the weaker the feeling will be that our lives are meaningless. And this is a feeling that a lot of people experience. I travel a lot and I speak with a lot of people and a lot of people have the impression that they lead a meaningless life. One reason for this is that uh, the uh, feeling, the relationship of uh, with nature is lost um, uh, and um, this feeling gets lost where relationships get lost. So nature is not the only important relationship, what, but one important uh, relationship that we can rediscover. And then we could also more increasingly think about the ecological uh, issue in our own every, in our own life. Uh, I want to highlight that we can do that. We don't need to do that because we're free people. I decide what I do, you decide what you do. It is just proposal suggestions, not new standards that I want to set up here. But one proposal um, is, why don't you check all the habits that you've got? You've got many habits. I've got many habits as well. Um, habits are something uh, fantastic. You can really sometimes uh, relax. Uh, you don't need to think about things uh, every time. Shall I do this? Shall I not do this? What should I cook uh, today in the evening? I simply go shopping for the groceries I usually buy. This is a habit, but this is the tricky thing about it. Um, by way of a habit, I wanted to do something two days ago. I wanted to buy apples in the supermarket two days ago, but all of a sudden I told myself, attention, watch out, uh, because um, I decided to have a new habit. Uh, look on the label, where are the apples from? The apples were from Colombia. And then I was looking around in the grocery store, I saw other types of apples uh, which came from Italy. We're in a difficult apple season, as the experts amongst you know, because they're the first early apples and the uh, and last year's apples have been consumed. And this is a gap. And during the seasonal gap, we get apples from other countries which already have apples at this time of the year. It is up to me if I buy the apple from Colombia or the apple from Italy. Where's the uh, ecological difference? One apple is delivered by plane, and each apple that is uh, being delivered uh, by a train has several kilograms of CO2, uh, which were produced by the apple, before I, they end up in my basket. The other apple comes from Italy. This is transported by a lorry here to Germany, but the CO2 consumption is uh, significantly less compared to the apple from Colombia. And this also clearly shows us that uh, living in an ecological way means to make compromises. Um, this is not uh, just a theory. Uh, not even the festival Überlebenskunst was able to give us a pure theory. As you can assume, you possibly already had a coffee. Um, coffee does, is not produced in the region of Brandenburg in Germany. Uh, coffee is roasted in Berlin. Berlin has the um, biggest uh, coffee roastery uh, of Europe in the district of Neukölln. But coffee is not produced in Europe. Here we have to make compromises. We can 
can uh, make various Im compromises. We can say, for example, or ask ourselves, uh, when uh, uh, having a cup of coffee, is uh, this uh, coffee produced uh, in an ecological way? Is it fair trade or not? So, you, as you see, if you want to, if you're interested in, if you want to uh, maintain uh, this uh, relationship with nature, you have to raise a lot of questions which concern our everyday life. And these are the important questions because the devil is to be found in everyday life. And um, just to reveal one thing, this holds true for all relationships. It's nice if you love another person, but um, uh, where love becomes decisive is in everyday life. Either you can manage everyday life together with your partner or you will not be able to love one another in the long term. And this um, is also true for the relationship with nature. Uh, maybe we'll go into the details during the discussion later on. We've got energy efficient um, dishwashers, fridges, hot water boilers. All these things are appliances that use a lot of uh, energy. If you look at your energy uh, meter, you see that the electricity, the energy that you use is uh, a lot, although you've switched off all the lights because the fridge is still connected to the electricity grid. And here you can save a lot of energy when buying uh, energy efficient uh, appliances. This is possible. You will now tell me this is expensive. This is true. But you also have to pay your electricity bill all the time. So if you put this in a relation, you know that if you buy a good fridge, uh, you will have it for five to ten years. So it makes a difference if you've got the energy class A plus or if you've got an old fridge uh, consuming a lot of energy, um, that makes a big difference. And the old fridges still exist in the US, for example. We can uh, make a start with regard to the small things. And this clearly shows us what the role of the individual can be uh, in society. So first of all, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This was a very nice input. Thank you.